<laughs> All right, I'm gonna apologize in advance. I am Italian, and so I will wave around my hands while I talk, which will sometimes make the microphone go far away from my face. <laughs> so anyway, hi, I'm Kat. Uh, I'm a software engineer here at Square uh, on the large sellers team. Today I'm gonna talk about how we constructed a new app architecture using a one-way flow of data and how this greatly improved our engineering efficiency. So for a little context, Square's core product is Square Register, which serves as a point of sale system for uh, small businesses. But as we grow and expand, we start building out support for larger businesses as well. When looking at building support for larger retail retailers, we realized that the existing app that we had just wasn't going to scale, and so we built a new one. Since we had the opportunity to start from a clean state, a clean slate, we got to thinking, what common paradigms were error prone and buggy? What could we change to improve the speed of development, code testability, and reduce the number of bugs? We came up with a few common problems that we saw in previous apps we'd written, both in iOS and elsewhere. So the first piece is it's easy for view controllers to have too much responsibility and get bloated. Let's walk through an example of how adding, an item, adding items to a cart and see how this plays out. So we start out with a cart, it's empty, it's got an error state, and the checkout button is disabled. Then, if we add an item to the cart, we have to update a lot of states. We have to add the item to the cart, we have to enable the checkout button, we have to change the checkout button color, and so forth. Or if we have another error state where someone tries to add another item and it's not found, then once again, we have to change the checkout button color, we have to change the text, we have to update the error state. And as we continue, it's really easy for us to forget one of these things as we're going. And this leads to bugs. So the next piece is shared data causes hard to discover bugs. Allowing multiple actors to share and edit the same data can lead to unexpected behavior and race conditions, which can be really hard to track down and how uh, to reproduce when you get a bug report. So let's say we have a cart where a customer tries to delete an item from the cart and calculate the cart total at the same time. This happens. <laughs> when, this error occur, or when this occurs, the app crashes because of a null pointer exception uh, and because the item that's getting totaled no longer exists. Once again, we get bugs. The next piece is when code has too much responsibility, it gets harder and harder to test. We start out with a cart and we've got two states. It can be empty or it can have items. And then the empty cart has a success state and an error state. And then the cart with items has an error state and a success state. And then they have different kinds of error states and success states. And this just multiplies as we get more and more different states and adds additional complexity to our app and it makes it harder and harder to test every possible case. So the takeaways from these common problems were that we need a design that where we could write update logic only once and that would enforce a clear division of responsibility of what could and could not mutate data. We decided to re-architect our app to have more layers than the typical MVC style. More layers means that each layer has a smaller responsibility and each layer can be tested individually. Shown as an overview of the system, but let's walk through an individual or each individual piece. We start out with a renderer, which is basically a way to output images. This may be rendering the view hierarchy or this may be rendering images to uh, send to the printer to re print receipts. Next, we have the context. This contains references to all services in the app, but it's only accessible from the renderer. Relevant parts of the context are gonna be passed in to the presenter, which the presenter transforms data stored in the services as which the services have read-only data uh, and turns it into an immutable struct, which we call a view model. Um, this is how we keep a lot of the non-view controller concerns out of the view controller. So all the data is parsed and formatted in the presenter. So next we have the view model, which is just the immutable struct. Um, uh, and next we have the view controller. The view controller's responsibilities are now much smaller than the typical view controller. It only stuffs data straight into outlets in the view and then it has handlers. And the handlers don't do update logic, they don't mutate anything, they just call straight into the services. Uh, the view is your typical iOS view, it's either programmatically uh, created or via zibs. Um, so the service is really what's gonna do all the heavy lifting our app. 
is responsible for initiating uh, operations with side effects, such as network calls or access permissions or triggering uh, or uh, setting errors or also changing state. Um, and all the, cha all the state changes that does is going to be on the main thread, meaning that we're not going to have shared data or race conditions. Um, and then the service is also responsible for triggering the renderer to render and complete the cycle. And on the side, we also have the repository, which is going to be a thin layer on top of our databases or on top of like network calls so that we don't have to write all that code over and over again. So when we put it all together, we have this cycle that repeats in a predictable manner when views need to update or change. We only allow the services to change state and only on the main thread. Everything except the, for the information in the services is immutable. And by limiting the actors that can change state, we remove update logic for when data is mutated and can reduce our code roughly by half. Although since we went from Objective-C to Swift, it was more like a fourth. <laughs> um, it's fast and easy to test since we don't rely on a bunch of states that would need to be set up in a whole bunch of view controller tests. So that's a lot of information. Let's go through an example. We start out with a render, which has a render function that calls the cart presenter to present. The cart presenter will produce a view model, um, or the cart presenter takes in a, di a couple different pieces from the context, such as in this case, the catalog service, the cart service, et cetera. Uh, and then the cart presenter has a present function, which takes the account service uh, uh, and returns an immutable struct, the cart view model. And the cart view model is basically just a immutable struct. It's got only let fields, if you're familiar with Swift syntax. Um, and then the view model gets passed in to the view controller. The view controller in its update function only just sets data on outlets in the view. And then the view controller also has outlets, or, or also has handlers to, for when a customer taps a button. Um, the cart view is just a view with outlets. We tended to do a lot of programmatic ones, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and so when the cart service is called by the view controller to add another item, uh, the cart service will then query the catalog. Uh, and the catalog is just one of those repositories that's a thin layer on the database. Um, and then the cart service will uh, add the item to the cart and trigger render. So here it is all together once again. Let's go back to the problems that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk. To solve the issue of view controllers getting too large and overreaching, we developed a multi-layered application where each layer of the app has a clear responsibility. And additionally, by structuring our code with immutable data, we were able to eliminate update code that, was, that is uh, focused on dealing with when data changes. To avoid the side effects of sharing data, we have minimal state in the app and a clear delineation of what can and cannot modify state. Uh, additionally, since we have minimal state in the app, the app behavior is deterministic. And also, because we have so many layers of organization, it's really easy that to add new people to the project because they have a really clear example of what goes where. Um, this architecture also uh, helps us have uh, easier to write and more comprehensive tests because each application layer is small and has limited responsibility, leading to fewer possible states overall. We also directly pass in each uh, in dependencies, um, making it easy to write tests without having a lot of setup code and where we can just pass in the relevant parts that change. We found that we actually really like this application structure and we may be applying it to register soon um, because I'm joining the payments team, yay. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and after almost a year of development, it's really stood its ground and uh, the retail team is uh, taking it on and growing it out. So thanks for coming. Uh, and now on to the next talk.